What's up guys, today I want to talk to you about stylized wood. Why wood? Good question. Maybe you watched my last video on sculpting stylized wood and you're wondering if I reused the same intro clip. You sure about that? You sure about that? You sure about that? So now that we know how to sculpt, let's learn how to paint. I'm going to be painting on this little wood piece I sculpted in my previous video. Feel free to use your own mesh or if you want to follow along with mine, you can grab this model on my Gumroad. You'll get access to the Blender file with the decimated high poly, low poly and also the blockout, as well as the final painter file and a wood smart material for use in painter. To get started, let's head over to our layers tab. We can remove the default paint layer and add a folder named wood and our first fill layer which will be our base color. We only want to turn on color and roughness for now, setting the roughness value pretty high as I like to focus on my colors first, and then uh, I'll come back and work on the roughness after. In the base color slot, we want to choose a nice woody color. Then I will duplicate that layer and call it base variation light. I'm also going to create a black mask for the wood folder just to isolate out the wooden pieces. can bring up the values of the color, add a bitmap mask with a grunge texture. I like to use this blotchy texture you can find with Substance Painter. Then we want to add a filter blur slope on top of that, tweaking the intensity and playing with the scale values for the grunge as well. and finally tweaking the opacity for the overall layer. I'm going to duplicate this layer and change the name to base variation dark, set the blending mode to multiply and then randomize the seed in the parameters. I'm also gonna tweak the layer opacity. Now we already have some good value variation in the colors. Let's add another layer for our edge highlights. I'm gonna turn off everything except the color, add a bitmap mask, search for your big curvature map. And then we can add a levels filter on top of that mask. We wanna bring the black levels down to isolate the areas we want. And now we can adjust the colors and layer opacities to something else we want. I'm going to duplicate this layer now and add a blur on top of the levels for the first layer and play with the intensity. Then I can play with the opacity for each of these layers. I'm going to do this because it gives me more control over the fall off from the edge highlights while still be able to control the center point intensity separately. Duplicating the upper layer again, I'm setting the blend mode to multiply and resetting the levels. then inverting the levels. And after that, we can drag the white over to isolate the cracks and crevices. And then once again, adding a blur filter on top so it isn't so sharp. And we're gonna name this layer Curvature Darken. Let's use our baked ambient occlusion now to add a bit more depth to the model. Creating a new color layer and setting the color to black. Add a bitmap mask with your ambient occlusion and now add a levels filter on top. We can invert that levels and then play with the values until we find something we like with a fairly soft fall off and then finally adjusting the layer opacity. Going back to the beginning of the stack where we created our base value variation, we can duplicate a couple more layers off that. And once again, we're just gonna adjust the grunge scale, blur slope intensity, and also the layer opacity. We just wanna start getting a bit more color variation into the model instead of just value variation.
Add another black fill layer at the top of the stack and in the properties change the projection from UV to planar projection. This layer is going to be a dark gradient from the bottom of the mesh, so using the gizmo to rotate, place and scale it into the right position. We can also play with the hardness and layer opacity to get the soft fall off we want. If you can't see the gizmo and want to move the position again, you can activate it by clicking the arrows icon in the top left of your screen. It should be under the edit drop down menu. Using the same technique we just used for the dark gradient, we can create a lighter gradient from the top down by setting the blend mode to soft light and adjusting the color until we find something a little warmer. And then from there, we just adjust the position and properties of the layer. Our next fill layer will be placed under the gradients in the stack, add a black mask, and as the name suggests, we will be using this layer to paint the ends of each plank. After painting, we want to add a blur filter to the mask to give it a nice soft fall off. I'm going to go back through the layer stack now, starting from the bottom and adjusting the roughness values of some of the layers. You can cycle through your PBR channels by pressing the C key. Wood is generally not a very reflective surface, so I'll keep it fairly rough. The wider the surface in your roughness channel, the less shiny it will be. Um, and I usually try to keep recessed and concave areas like cracks more rough. So after adjusting some of the layers, I will add another fill layer at the top and only the roughness channel activated and then adding a grunge bitmap mask just to bring in some final roughness variation. I'm going to create another folder now for the metal nails, creating a base layer and adding a black mask to the folder I can use to isolate the nails. I like to set the metallic value for the base layer to around 0.8 and bring the base color down to be a little bit darker and we can keep the roughness pretty shiny. Duplicating that base layer and renaming it to edge highlights. I'm going to bring up the color value to be brighter, bring down the roughness value a small bit and add a bitmap mask with the curvature map and just like the wood, using a levels filter to isolate the edges we want. Now the same as before, creating another curvature mask based layer, we will invert the levels filter this time. That will isolate the cracks and dents and then we want to bring the roughness up and the color value down. Also turning the metallic to black, and this will be our curvature darken layer. Adding a final color layer now with the baked ambient occlusion map, roughness set to high again and color value low, like with the curvature darken layer. Adding in an inverted levels filter and playing with the layer opacity. Finally, as the nails are quite small, we can quickly finish the metal off with a purely roughness layer, adding in a grunge mask to get some shininess variation. All right, there you go. The texturing is now finished. The board is looking a little plain at the moment, so I decided to quickly add some paint with one of the default alphas in Substance Painter. Feel free to play around with your own designs or add a notice board on top. If you enjoyed this tutorial, like and subscribe. It would earn my eternal love and gratitude and really help out my channel. Any questions, you can comment below. And if you're interested, you can check out my other video on sculpting this piece. So with that said, have a beautiful day and I will see you in the next next one.